Framework laptop is unlike any laptop I've ever reviewed. It's fully modular, upgradable, and customizable, but after using the Framework laptop as my daily driver for over a full week now, I can say that this is way more than just a gimmick. This is Luke with Digital Trends, and let me quickly explain why the concept of a fully upgradable laptop is so attractive, because it's one of the primary questions we get on laptop reviews. Can you update the RAM? Can you update the storage? It's an issue that comes up a lot, which is exactly what the Framework laptop addresses. But before we get there, hey, you're already here, you're already watching this video, let's get some engagement going down in the comments below, because it's fun. I want to know how important this topic really is to you. Is the ability to upgrade memory or storage or anything else in your laptop a must-have feature? Why or why not? Leave me a comment. I'm really curious to see how you are all reacting to that topic and to this laptop in particular. And while you're there, as always, leave us a like and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's do this. So on the surface, the Framework laptop is as ordinary a laptop as they come. It's a basic silver clamshell that resembles a cheaper version of a MacBook, not unlike countless Windows laptops and Chromebooks. And that's not exactly a compliment, and I didn't really mean it to be, but maybe blending in is kind of the point here. After all, the idea of the Framework laptop is to look and function like any other laptop, especially if it's trying to demonstrate how easy it would be for other laptops to take a similar approach to modularity. That doesn't mean I wouldn't have appreciated a more original design, of course, but you can at least see what framework was aiming for. Now, most laptop manufacturers claim that reduced upgradability is a necessary trade-off for things like portability, build quality, system integrity, all things we want in our laptops. That's true of Apple's MacBooks, as it is of Dell's XPS 13. But for the most part, the framework laptop proves those to be just excuses. It's just 0.62 inches thick, just 2.9 pounds, not at all a chunky laptop. No, it's not quite as small as the XPS 13 or Surface Laptop 4, and you may have laptops like the you know, Razer Blade Stealth 13 or the ROG Flex X 13 that are similar size but push performance restraints with discrete GPUs. But that aside, the Framework laptop is very similar in size to the current 13-inch MacBook Pro. That's not bad for a laptop that you can almost completely rip the guts out of. The same is true in build quality. The worry, of course, is that with all these moving pieces here, it would introduce some weaknesses in the design. And no, the chassis isn't machined out of a single block of aluminum. There are a couple spots that feel bendy, such as in the lid. But then again, that's not unheard of for a laptop of this price and size. But let's get to what really makes this laptop unique, which is the upgradability and expandability. So when you pull out the Framework laptop right out of the box, it's gonna look a little strange. It has four exposed USB-C ports, two on either side of the laptop. Framework allows you to then choose whatever ports you wanna put in, and my unit shipped with a bunch of options. Now, you wanna keep at least one of these a USB-C port for charging purposes, but from there, it's entirely up to you. Maybe you want HDMI or even DisplayPort for your monitor connections. Maybe you want three USB-A ports for all your accessories and peripherals. Or maybe you just want to toss all these expansion cards into a bag and use them as adapters for when the needs arise. It's the kind of thing gadget heads will love. But it's more than just a novelty, I think. It makes for a pretty versatile setup that no other laptop can replicate without the use of dongles and adapters and USB hubs, especially since swapping out expansion cards is just as easy as plugging in a dongle and can be done without powering the system down. I was let down when I saw that a full-size SD card slot was not included as an expansion card. Instead, Framework went with a micro SD card slot, which is a lot less useful. But if Framework's plans unfold as stated, many more options could be sold or included in the future. But ports are really only the first step. The entire system is built around the idea of easy access to the internal components. Most laptops offer access to a removable bottom lid, but the Framework laptop provides entry from the top right through the keyboard. Using the included screwdriver, it's as simple as loosening the five fasteners on the bottom and then pulling the keyboard right off, which is magnetized to stay in place. Once you have that keyboard off, you'll see the internal layout, which is all neatly labeled and obviously removable. Framework even went to the point of including scannable QR codes on each component that will tell you exactly what parts have been included and how to install them. 
Laptop manufacturers tend to downplay the specific memory, storage, and connectivity being used, and would rather you just didn't dabble in tinkering with your laptop at all. Removing components on the framework laptop couldn't be simpler. Adding storage through the M.2 slot requires just loosening the fastener, while RAM snaps in place really easily. The Wi-Fi module is a little trickier, which requires you to correctly connect the antenna cables. Framework really has thought through all the smallest details, and it adds up to an enjoyable upgrading experience, both for newbies and PC veterans. But there's more to it than that, because we all know that adding storage or RAM is a good way to extend the life of a laptop, but eventually the processor and graphics will hold you up. That's what makes the Framework laptop even more special. As long as Framework comes through on its promise to update these in the future, in theory it should be really easy to swap out the main board, which is the motherboard and the CPU, for future versions down the line. It should be noted though that while the storage, RAM, battery, and almost everything else plays nice with third-party parts that you can just buy off the shelf and install yourself, the main board, the CPU and the motherboard, will need to be provided by Framework. These are proprietary designs that can't be easily separated on your own, it's all soldered together. Since this is Framework's first lab laptop, that might make you a little worried. You might be worried about the longevity of Framework itself as a company, and that's fair. Updates to the CPU in the future require Framework to still be around in a decade or so, and there are no guarantees about that. Now, the version of the Framework laptop that I got had all these parts already installed. However, the company does also sell a discounted DIY edition, which requires installing these modules yourself, which is really easy. For most people who are interested in the modularity and upgradability of the Framework laptop, the DIY edition is a much cheaper way of getting the exact same laptop experience in all the same parts. And while all of that is what makes the Framework laptop really unique, after spending over a week with the laptop, I wasn't spending much of my time swapping out components. You know, I was using it as my primarily daily working device. And I, through doing that, I was really surprised by how many things the Framework laptop gets right, and sometimes even better than other laptops. Let's start with the display, because this was the most surprising feature to me. I kind of assumed that this would be an easy place for Framework to cut corners, but instead, they made some really good choices here. First off, I love this 13.5 inch three by two aspect ratio. I talk about this all the time, but this is my favorite aspect ratio, especially as a 13 inch laptop. Coming from a 16 by nine 13 inch laptop to this will feel so much better and you'll feel like you can get so much more work done. The screen is actually almost identical to the feel of the Surface laptop. That includes the resolution, which is 2256 by 1504. It feels nice and sharp, and it's a pretty nice upgrade over 1080p. It's also a really bright screen. I measured it at a max of 463 nits, which is really bright, and it makes for a really versatile laptop. It's good while using it outside, next to windows, or even just some really bright fluorescent lights. There are two small downsides to this screen though. First, there's no touch screen option, which isn't a big deal for me, but I know it's a deal killer for some. Second, it's not a super precisely calibrated screen. Instead, it's just relying on the basic calibration of the panel maker. The colors still do look good, of course, and the color saturation is nice. You're getting full 100% sRGB, but you may want to calibrate this if you're you know, a professional color grader or something. The keyboard and touchpad. Again, a couple more elements that really surprised me by the quality, especially the keyboard. There's a full 1.5 millimeters of travel and it just feels so nice, especially if you're one of those people who really doesn't like shallow keyboards in their laptops. It actually reminds me a bit of a ThinkPad keyboard in that it has a lot of travel, but the keycaps still feel stable and the key presses are still really snappy. It's kind of a dream to type on and the layout has everything exactly where you'd want it. The touchpad is also great. It's large, responsive, and the click isn't overly loud. Now you do get a fingerprint reader built into the power button that works really well, but you are missing the IR camera for Windows Hello facial recognition, which is too bad because something like that is usually included in this price of laptop. It's hard for me to complain about the cameras here because what you do get on the Framework laptop is a 1080p, 60 frames per second webcam. And hey, look at that. Maybe it's not that hard to put a decent webcam in a laptop. If you're like me and you've been frustrated by the idea of buying a $2,000 laptop that still has a 720p webcam, the Framework laptop will make you very happy and you can tell right away the difference in image quality in all those video conferencing calls you've been doing lately. Now all of that sounds great, right? And for the most part, it is. 
But don't go off and buy this laptop just yet. There are a couple of things that you'll need to keep in mind before you go any further. The biggest disappointment of the Framework laptop by far is the battery life. In my light battery life tests, whether that's video playback or web browsing, I was only getting around seven hours. With more happening, like in my own daily workflow, for example, I was down to closer to five hours or so away from the wall. Something like the Surface Laptop 4 or even the XPS 13 is going to do much better in this regard. Don't even think about including the MacBook Pro or MacBook Air in that comparison, because those are not even in the same category. The other slight downside here is the thermals. My unit included an Intel Core i7 1165G7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD in the M.2 slot. This is the middle configuration, and it's a fairly powerful laptop, just as fast as other Intel-based 13-inch laptops, such as Surface Laptop, XPS 13, Razer Book 13, and so on. The internals did, though, get kind of hot during some of the testing, some of it sitting in the high 90s Celsius or even hitting that 100 degree maximum, which is not something you like to see. I didn't notice any severe throttling happening here, but the kind of basic thermal system that the Framework laptop uses is likely to blame here. It's just a single fan over the CPU. But really, outside of battery life, the Framework laptop really is an impressive little laptop, especially when you consider that this is a first generation product from a brand new company. And yes, you do have to consider the very real possibility that framework may not support this laptop on into eternity, which means the dream of holding onto this same laptop for as long as you would hold onto your desktop may not be fully realized. But what's cool about the Framework laptop is that they aren't asking you to sacrifice very much. It's fairly affordable, especially if you get that DIY edition. And other than that, this is a very competitive premium laptop, aside from the fact that you can get in there and replace or upgrade many of the components. And if things do end up working out with Framework's ambitious plans, man, you have something very exciting on your hands. At the very least, we can hope that framework succeeds so that it influences the rest of the industry. Because if it's one thing that we all want, it's tech that lasts longer and doesn't create landfills full of garbage for no reason. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you're interested in picking up the Framework laptop, make sure to use the link we've got for you in the description box below. And again, if you haven't already, leave us a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos from Digital Trends. 